What's up guys, my name is Julie and this is the Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands. I have recently gotten into sewing with more knits. Um, I have dabbled in it before but just really never had a very good grip on how to finish them in a way that felt aesthetically pleasing to me and looked good on the inside. I put a lot of wear on my garments. When I make something, I make it to wear it. So I am wearing it, I am washing it, and I do not have time for peculiar laundry details. You know what I mean? So I have recently come across some very cool ways to finish my knits and I want to share those with you guys. First way is the lettuce hem on the serger. There are YouTube tutorials out there for this, so you know, your girl's not a professional, but we're gonna do it anyway because we can. So I'm gonna take you over to the serger and I'm going to show you how to achieve a lettuce hem on your serger. Let's go. Right, guys so this is the serger first thing I want to know is that before you start tampering with your serger get some type of container or something so that you can put everything you're moving or taking off in that way when all is said and done you're not searching through your mess of a sewing desk I'm talking to myself right now for missing pieces to your serger that you will need later the so first thing that you want to do when you are trying to achieve a lettuce hem on your serger is you want to remove one of your needles so your serger will have two needles as you can see I already have have one because I've taken one out. My serger came with this little tool here and basically the end of this tool just goes into this little square here like so and then I twist it to unscrew it. The needle slides out and then I twist it to tighten it back. Once I take that out I put it in my bowl so I don't lose it and my needle is also somewhere in this bowl. The next thing that you want to do since you've taken the needle out also is remove the first thread cone that would go here because that's not necessary. So you're gonna take that thread out too. All right, now we are looking at the side of your serger. This is going to be the next step. So the next thing you wanna do, which I have done, is originally this knob here I have turned up to about 1.0. I, for whatever I'm doing, have turned it all the way down to 0 0.7. The next thing that everybody must do is turn these knobs here. I usually have mine up to about three all the way over to R and the same thing here. I usually have mine somewhere, I think I usually have mine up here between five and six. You wanna turn that all the way over to R. Down here, this is your knife blade. You can disengage it by turning that over or you can leave it engaged. I like to leave my knife blade engaged because um, oftentimes when I'm hemming something, I do want to take a little bit of fabric off of that thing. So I leave my knife gauge completely engaged. All right, now let's talk about thread settings. So remember that this thread is not being used, so you are only using these three. I have found that for me, and the stitch that I like to achieve, it is best to set my thread setting at about five and a half. Now this one is a little tighter. This one I like to have at about five, um, but because one of my threads is not actually a thread cone, I have tightened it just a little bit. I'm actually using a bobbin and I'll show you that in a second. So you wanna play around with these. I would test it out on your machine because while we may have the same machine or we may not, each machine is different and the fabric that you are using is gonna affect it. All right, the last thing that we are looking at here is the thread cones because when I did this last night I was sewing this green fabric here I didn't want a thread that was going to be drastically different and for me I usually only buy black and white thread cones that's all I really have in my stash so I pulled a thread from my thread rack and that is what I used here as you can see this guy here is just a bobbin that I have loaded up with this green um, fabric that's just not gonna focus back here. So I have my two greens and then I have a gray that was pretty close to it. Um, For the bobbin, while I have done it, I wouldn't recommend this because I noticed that when I put the bobbin in, it did change kind of like the tension and the way that the lettuce hem was coming together. I left it for the sake of what I was doing, but if I were you, I would definitely not use a bobbin because like I said, it did affect the tension of the lettuce hem. All right, now the machine's been all set up the next thing we are going to do is actually sew so let me get some fabric and we will get to sewing I suppose
And you see, that creates your lettuce hem. I think as you sew in the fabric gets longer, it gets more wavy and it gives a really nice like finished lettuce hem effect. And there you have it. You have like this nice wavy lettuce hem. Just a fun and simple way to finish your knit garments. Remember that when you are done to put your serger back into its regular serger settings. Now, if you don't have a serger and you want to achieve this nice wavy hem, I'm gonna show you how to do that on your sewing machine. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so we are over at the sewing machine. We are going to do the lettuce hem. The first thing that you wanna do is obviously fix your settings. So I have a computer so, um, computerized sewing machine. If you don't, that's cool. You, you should know how to change the stitch type on your machine. If you don't, refer to your manual. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's change up the settings and then let's make the hem. Okay, so this is how I change my stitches on my machine. So I'm going to go over to a zigzag stitch. Now, again, my machine is computerized, so I'm going to change the length, and the length and the width manually. But if yours is not, then you would look at where your length and your width gauge or dowel is, and that's what you, where you would adjust it. So I'm going to go over. And basically what you want to do is you want to tighten this, um, this stitch. So I am going to decrease the length uh, let's decrease it a little bit more. So we're gonna go to 0 0.9 and then you don't wanna make it wider. I kinda, I think I'm gonna do that. So I tightened up my stitch length and I have shortened my width. Those are the settings I have it on. I'm gonna go okay, that's done. So remember when you're doing a lettuce hem, you are not like folding it over, you're just doing this on the raw edge. So basically what I want is I want my needle to hit in two points. So I want my needle to hit here and then I want my needle to back bounce up and hit the fabric. So each cinch, stitch, excuse me, is going to go like to the edge of the fabric a little over and then back onto the fabric. And you need to adjust your fabric onto your needle plate accordingly. So I'm gonna make sure that when I put it down, my first stitch is going there, and then my next stitch is going into the fabric. Now when I'm doing it on my sewing machine, I like to like use my hand to pull the fabric through, and I find that when you do that anyway, it makes the hem more wavy, which is the desired outcome, so it's all good. Also on the sewing machine, when you're pulling it through, this is gonna help you from um, creating knots and jamming up your machine. Okay, and this is what it looks like when you are done with it on the machine. So as you can see, in my opinion, when you do it on your sewing machine, you get a much wavier hem than on your serger. The serger hem is thicker and it looks kind of like more of a professional finish, I guess, but I do much prefer the one on the sewing machine. So that is how you achieve a wavy hem on your knit garments. The next thing that I wanna show you is how I finish knit garments when I need to like really hem them. So fold the full fabric over and then stitch to create a clean finish. First, I'll show you really quickly what that stitch looks like on the garment if you haven't seen my other videos and then I'm gonna show you how I do it on my machine. So this is the stitch on the garment. It is a zigzag stitch that goes forwards and backwards three times. So it goes one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and then one, two, three, and so on and so forth. This is what it looks like on the inside. And what I like about this stitch one is that while it is decorative, it does finish it very nicely. It kind of pulls the fabric in almost to make it look like it was folded, like you have a band down here. The next thing that I really like is that you can use two alternating fabrics. So one on your um, top stitching and then one on your bobbin. And the bobbin fabric won't show because as you can see, what happens is the machine pulls in that pink, um, the pink, the pink, excuse me, thread just enough and tucks it into the white. Also, it has a super, super clean finished hem. So this is a new way that I have found to finish my garments because I can't get the twin needle to work on this machine. Let me take you over or back towards the machine and I'll show you how I achieve this finish on, <laughs> why can't I talk? I'm gonna tip you back over to the machine and I'm gonna show you how I get the zigzag stitch finish on my machine. So let's do that. 
Okay, so we're back over here to the stitch settings. Now I need to go out of my settings completely. And I am going to go, I believe it's here. And it is this stitch right here. Let me zoom in for you. So this is what the stitch looks like. So if you see this on your machine, then that is, I, I'm calling it the triple zigzag stitch where it goes three times each way. So that's the stitch that I'm gonna um, select and I'm not going to do anything in terms of the settings. That is the stitch, that is what it is going to be. This stitch also uses a regular presser foot, which I like that I don't have to change my feet for this because I know sometimes when you're doing decorative stitches, it requires you to use a different foot and that can get a little bit tricky, but this one does not. So this is the stitch that we are going to go with. I have my fabric here and I have a seam gauge and this is to determine my seam allowance. However you wanna mark your seam allowance, you can do that, whether it's through using a heat erasable pen or chalk, whatever the case may be, that's fine. So I am working with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance just because that is usually what patterns call for and having practiced this, that is what I'm comfortable with. So I'm just gonna take my seam gauge, I'm gonna fold it over like so, and then I am going to pin that area. Okay, so I've already shown you the stitch selection. We've pinned our fabric, we have our um, seam allowance pinned down. Now you're gonna go ahead and put it underneath. I like to just kind of get my fabric all the way past like this little hole there because I feel like it's just easier for it to catch on, but you do what feels best to you and most natural to your machine. So you get it underneath, you're making sure that the edge is lined up here. It is pre-pinned, so you shouldn't have to worry about that too much. But one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna feel for the other edge of the fabric. So I can feel that it is like right here. And as I am sewing, I'm gonna keep my finger about right here just to make sure that the edge underneath is running directly into the needle. I don't want it to get skewed because then it's not not going to give that clean finish on the inside of the garment that I'm looking for. So as I'm sewing, I'm gonna keep my finger here, I'm gonna be looking up, and I'm going to be checking underneath there. Now it sounds like a lot, but the more that you do it, it does become intuitive and you do get better at it. It's just like second nature, you know what to do. Make sure you're stopping to get those pins out because when you're doing a zigzag stitch like this, you don't wanna stitch over your pins. And this is coming from someone who always stitches over her pins. So this is what you get when it immediately comes off of the machine. Yes, it does look a little bubbly, but I'm gonna press that out and I'll show you that it's just gonna go, it should go nice and flat. And then when you flip it over, as you can see, it's just really cleanly finished on the inside. You don't get any overhang. All of the fabric is encased in that zigzag stitch. So let me go over and press this and then I will show you what it looks like after it's pressed. And this is what it looks like all pressed. So you see it lays nice and flat, nice and flat on this side. And yeah, that is how you achieve that finish. This hem is a little bit wonky. I do see that, but again, keep in mind that I was trying to record and sew this at the same time. I promise you that if you do not have a camera in front of your face, it will come out a lot neater than that. A quick tip that I wanted to share as well with like pressing your knits because I never wanna like show you something and not really give you the full scope of how you achieve it. So I have a piece of wood. I wanna say this is like a two by four. This is what I used to put my grommets in. It's just from like the hardware store. It was like, it was a longer piece. Um, and then I just sawed it down into little pieces like this with the hand saw. So when I am steaming, I kind of use this as a clapper since I don't have a clapper and clappers are very expensive. I just use this instead. This is oak. And basically um, when I steam it, I go ahead and I press this down for about 10 seconds and then I move on and I press down the next part for about 10 seconds. And that usually gives me really nice flat hems like you see here. So yeah, that's that. So this is the zigzag stitch finish. This is the front. Again, this is the back. And then where's my lettuce hem? This is the lettuce hem and this is on the machine and this is on the serger. And those are different ways to finish your knits. All right guys, and that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do bear in mind that this is my first time doing a tutorial of any sort. And so if anything is obscure or unclear or I left vital information out, then kindly let me know in the comments and I will definitely fine tune and do better in the future. I do hope that you found this helpful and until next time, stay beautiful and make great things. Bye.